For all too long, the journeys we've dreamt of and people we've missed seemed so far away. But now, adventure is calling. Once in a lifetime experiences are within reach. And the time to be together has returned. This shoot by Thomas Barwick captures the joy of getting together and getting away. Covering themes of reunion, healing, wellness, and exploration. This production focuses on the immersive experience of travel and deliberately draws on the colors, textures, natural elements, and quality of the light from this part of the world, and conveys contemporary travel concepts from Gen Z on a budget, to sustainable travel, to luxury destination weddings and beyond. The journeys we've dreamt of are finally here, and they're just getting started. See them all and get inspired at creativeinsights.gettyimages.com. On today's download, we'll show you why authenticity still matters, what authenticity means in 2023, how we uniquely collaborate with contributors to capture authentic images and videos, and tips and tricks to find it all on GettyImages.com. The download presented by Getty Images starts now. Download presented by Getty Images. I'm your host, Jennifer Kelly. Thank you for joining us. As always, I want to give a special shout out to all of our premium access subscribers watching today, and thank you for your business. We truly appreciate it. In our day to day conversations, customers tell us that authenticity is still a priority when sourcing visual content. And our visual GPS research backs that up by showing us what is being searched for and downloaded. But what exactly is authenticity in 2023 and how can brands tap into it? Our guests today are no strangers to how we create authentic images and videos here at Getty Images. Please welcome back to the show, Guy Merrill and Amy Leifelt. Thanks, Jen. Glad to be back. It's really nice to be here. I'm Guy Merrill, Global Head of Art here at Getty Images. We wanted to give you a peek today behind the curtain of how our in-house creative team approach content creation, and more specifically, how we approach making content that resonates with authenticity. Um, before we dig into some really incredible visuals, I wanted to address the concept of authenticity, thus the name of this session today. You know, what does authentic imagery really mean? Uh, it's a word that we get we hear use of a lot. We see it in advertising. We hear it in marketing. We see it consistently in brand guidelines. Um, authenticity has really been a central part of conversations around visuals for a long time. Um, even way back when I started, we heard from customers consistently that they were looking for images that were authentic, that were felt more real, imagery that felt relatable, um, imagery that wasn't posed, imagery that wasn't stocky. Um, and so, as we said, this has been something we've consistently heard for a long time, but what it actually looks like constantly evolves and is really affected by, you know, cultural shifts. So the challenge for our creative team is to take this on board, be aware of those cultural shifts and visual shifts in the landscape, but also create imagery that will have impact, um, imagery that will inspire, that will resonate, imagery that grabs people's attention, um, and that's done through making imagery that feels modern and contemporary, has an element of aspiration and uniqueness, as well as, you know, aspects of good photography, like lighting and composition. So how do we strike that balance? 
how do we create imagery that is on the one hand um, resonating and attention grabbing, but is also you know visually captivating, but it's also authentic at the same time, that resonates with that authenticity. And I think there's a theme here that I think is really important to pay attention to as we go through this, which is in, authenticity is something that is created. It is the feeling an image gives you. It's not necessarily if the image is real or not. It's does, how does it make you feel? Does that feeling feel real? Um, crafting authentic, authentic imagery is done through deliberate choices, informed choices in the production, um, who and what to include, the model choices, who are the people in the imagery, the location choices, the way they're dressed, the way something is lit, all of those can inform how an image can resonate with authenticity. Um, so there's a complexity there in terms of, of creating imagery that resonates with authenticity. And it's understanding the nuance too. It's focusing on in-between moments, thinking about moments that are less to camera, um, moments that historically might've been called missed moments, actually having value. And some of that comes out in the edit too, when we give imagery back, you know, recognizing that this one frame here feels really posed and inauthentic and the next frame actually just really resonates with authenticity. So there are a huge amount of choices that are involved in kind of getting to that point and striking that balance. So yes, keep all this in mind as we go through some recent productions that really exemplify this idea of crafted authenticity. So now I want to introduce my colleague, Amy Leifeld, who's going to take you through some of those details. Welcome, Amy. Thanks, Guy. Hi, everyone. I'm Amy Leifeld, and I'm the Director of Creative Strategy. Um, as Guy said, authentic imagery is created. And our team puts a lot of effort into the briefing process and pre-production, you know, finding the right people, the right location, and setting up scenarios to create an experience that really looks and feels real. Um, so thinking about putting some guardrails on it about what's supposed to happen and what we're trying to achieve, but also letting as much uh, naturally happen as possible. So I'm going to take you through two productions um, that are pretty recent, and they're both on the subject of travel. The photographer th for this pro these projects was um, Thomas Barwick. We've been working really closely with him since 2009. And, you know, we work very closely with a lot of our exclusive contributors, uh, briefing them, directing them, going on shoots when we can. The genesis for these two projects was we were just coming out of the pandemic. Um, and we knew we needed travel imagery. Our content planning and analysis team determined a lack of uploads on the subject. And this makes sense because, you know, we were basically stuck close to home for nearly two years. So the Mexico shoot was inspired by an Instagram post I saw. I follow a lot of travel influencers and um, tourism bureaus. And I saw this pool in the middle of some treetops uh, with nothing around it. So it was just extremely unique and I just wanted to know more. So this spark of an idea was a place where we could start the travel story. After looking further, I could see there's a lot of variety of themes we could um, shoot there and it had a real sense of place as well. It was very, so unique. So we filled out this shoot by planning some other stories in a town close by, which had picturesque streets, colorful backgrounds and you know was becoming a very trendy place to visit. And, you know, to create situations that uh, feel real, you've really got to cast people who know each other in some way by creating narratives that come naturally to the cast. They're able to execute your vision, even though they're not actors. Um, so I think having those clear narratives and understanding how that can come alive with the right location, casting and direction are key. So this project took place over five days, and the first series is based around a small picturesque town. So we shot a boutique hotel scenario with a real couple, and it had an eco-sustainable look and feel. We also shot some experiential travel. We really wanted to source a local food uh, experience, so we shot at a Mayan restaurant that had a cooking class, and it just happened to be Day of the Dead, so they actually had a special uh, offering created for the day. We had a uh, multi-generational family narrative, sightseeing around town on a picture-perfect historical street, you know, at the perfect time of day. We also focused on romance with the city break feel, casting a young Latino, Afro-Latino couple. 
Um, so moving on to a different location, the concept was affordable and sustainable travel where we cast a, a Gen Z uh, gay couple and their friends. And this was a newly opened eco uh, campground with glamping tents and a cenote. And there was a lot of you know, model POV with GoPros and underwater camera um, here, which felt really immersive as well. Um, and then the bulk of the shoot was focused on aspirational tropical beach vacations, the original spark for the shoot. This location, um, you know, could be many things. So we tried to get as much variety as possible from singles, single mothers traveling together with their sons to a family fishing and snorkeling trip. Uh, we shot gay travel with a couple in their mid forties, which had a wellness and sustainable luxury angle a girlfriend's getaway or wellness retreat. You know, wellness um, is one of our four forces, of course, but it was also such a hot topic coming out of the pandemic that this was a perfect location for that theme. And this group of women in particular we cast are all friends, so not hard to direct. One of them actually was a yoga instructor, so she was perfect in leading others at the outdoor studio. We also shot two weddings. Everyone in the cast knew each other, so there was great interaction, lots of dancing and high energy. Um, the bride actually had to leave the set because she really wanted to marry him and she couldn't stop crying. And you can see her in this image wiping the tears away. She's being, she said being surrounded by her um, friends was, it felt too real. And so, you know, that's the goal. The cast are living a seamless world where real meets make believe. The other wedding was a gay uh, was a gay wedding. We used um, the couple before, so potentially you have a whole story there of wedding and honeymoon. Um, this content didn't really exist in libraries, and this couple was perfect. They'd been married for ten years. Um, we also did some large group portraits, uh, demonstrating the concept of reunion and connection with family and friends, which is still a big theme today. So. As I said, um, Tom tried every kind of POV. So he used an underwater housing, a drone, and these aren't tools that every photographer is gonna have in their repertoire. He's really been good at adapting and learning as technology changes. So building off the momentum of the Mexico shoot, we collaborated on another travel project in Morocco. Um, we knew we needed North African travel content after speaking to our European Creative Insights team. Uh, so we shot a variety of content, not just travel, hitting on classic concepts of family, friends, and small business. Our first shoot was tourists with a guide at the ruins of El Badi Palace. Um, this is a fully released landmark, minus all the crowds, um, giving a more aspirational angle. Uh, Marrakesh tourist sites are very crowded, and if you go there, it's not going to look like this. Tom, you know, had to pay a location fee to be let in privately. We also shot shop owners, tourists, and local shoppers in the Medina, which is the old city. We had a variety of stalls, so the Spice Market, Olive Market, focusing on that local experience and feel. I love this image of the man in the pastry stall. He's very famous in Marrakesh. He's been there since 1963. People come from all over town to buy his treats. Um, so this image is 100% authentic um, and released. So you can see his spirit, his energy. And for this particular setup, we had to switch out all the images that he had hanging in his stall um, to release content and deal with uh, five different types of lighting, um, balancing as best we could all that light. We also shot luxury travel, um, two different boutique hotels. One was a little more classic and upscale uh, using a variety of people. We focused on hospitality and service um, with the staff, making sure to get all the details like the ubiquitous um, mint tea service. Um, locations like this you know, are costly and since it's such a high-end hotel, you can only shoot certain times of day when everyone's out on their adventures. So you have limited time to work and you have to work with the light you have. The second location was a little hipper, so uh, more affordable. So the cast, we had them dress a little more casual, but you can see the detail of the woodwork, the colors, the plant life. 
and the laid back energy of the Riyads um, speak to the dichotomy of the city. You know, there's the frenzied nature of the Medina versus the quiet and private hidden interiors um, hidden behind those big wooden doors. So the expressions and the interactions between these couples and friends feel candid, they feel like caught moments. So switching gears, we uh, shot some more local content. Uh, we shot a family at a vegetarian restaurant that could basically translate anywhere. Um, this location was also great for small business and hospitality and the staff is fully released. Um, and as dining goes in Marrakesh, you know, it's known for its rooftop terraces and garden restaurants. So here are a couple other locations where we shot um, using real couples and friends. Uh, the views of the city are iconic. Um, we also shot a cooking class here, uh, which could be used for either local or experiential tourism. We also created imagery around contemporary uh, Moroccan youth, uh, a couple of uh, a group of young adults in their late teens, early twenties, kind of a snapshot of what it looks like to hang out there. Um, and then we uh, took a more traditional approach um, and cast a multi-generational family celebration, which could, could have been a birthday or a holiday. Um, we got a lot of input from our local production team to make sure everything um, was right. So all this is created, the compositions, the color palette, the catered meal, and the 12 chairs we had to rent. So the original ones were hot pink, had tall backs, would have stuck out of everyone's heads. So the scene feels real, but everything has been planned except the interactions of the family. So that's some of the imagery from these two new projects. Um, Tom, like many of our other contributors, continue to evolve, try new approaches, look for new regions and topics to shoot. And you know these big projects don't occur by happenstance. A lot of investment of time, collaboration, internal and external expertise go into creating this imagery. And he's not the only contributor who uh, does these large productions. So Guy's gonna take you through a couple more contributors and their projects that are happening all over the world. Brilliant, thanks, Amy. Um, God, it is so inspiring to hear about the work that goes into creating content like this the care, the attention to detail, um, the reliance on years of expertise and how things are approached. So yeah, like Amy said, I wanted to highlight a few other recent productions that we approach in similar ways. Um, one is a shoot from a contributor called Flash Pop. Um, this is a shoot that focused specifically on a multi-generational Black family celebration. This came straight out of some of our um, needs through uh, our internal needs tools and visual GPS. And here are the things to think about and to, to, to look at as we showcase the imagery is the careful casting choices. These people didn't know each other. So this was, you know, this was cast like a small film. And how do we put people together in a way that really resonates where the, you kind of can get a sense of that connection? Um, the location was very carefully um, considered and vetted. Um, and off the back of the location, there was a very specific color palette that was pulled into kind of the creative briefing again to really tell a cohesive story about family about togetherness um about fun and connection all with this kind of nostalgic summary vibe that we see in the in the imagery despite the fact that this imagery was shot in the middle of winter and it happened to be in the middle of a snowstorm but hopefully you would never notice that you would never be able to tell that looking at the imagery um, another production i wanted to highlight is um, an, an amazing esports shoot that came in from a partner we work with called Mascot, who are based out of Sweden. This is a huge production, um, and we'll show you some of the imagery. Um, this came out of, again, specific needs around eSport and trying to create something that felt like a genuine big eSport competition. So in this case, we do look to genuine editorial news-based um, imagery for the inspiration to make this feel as real as possible. So that comes down to the moments we focus on, the way it's lit, the camera angles where the cameras are positioned, the styling huge here, the logos, um, the, the visuals and all the monitors, because all of that had to be created for this shoot. The logos were all created so they could all be released. So all of this is a fabrication to mimic the sense of a real of a real esports competition. 
and then bringing in those other elements to like really brilliant casting that would be more inclusive. We recognized our content didn't have a lot of female gamers and was didn't have a huge amount of diversity in terms of ethnic diversity. So these are some of the factors that we also layered into that production to really make it feel special. And the last one I wanted to highlight is from contributor Klaus Bedfeldt. This is a brilliant studio portrait shoot. Um, in many ways, it would seem quite a simple shoot, but again, I think its simplicity is really deceiving. A huge amount of consideration went into pulling together a shoot like this, working really careful with his art director, carefully with his art director. They focused specifically on older models. Again, that came straight out of needs. So all the models here are 50 plus, all the way up into their 70s. And they really wanted to create a brilliant energy, a sense of fun and positivity. And that comes through the model choices. So they're the, the casting decisions were done really carefully to make sure that they had a, a really broad spread of uh, faces and people, but also those who could really demonstrate their personality through the lens. And, you know, a, a huge part of this, too, is about um, the color palettes that they chose here. It was very, very carefully considered um, how what colors they wanted to use. And even some of the backdrops that are featured here were made bespoke for this shoot because they were so... They were so, the attention to detail was so high in terms of what they wanted this to look like. And I think, you know, once you start to look at it through that lens, you can really see how powerful this imagery is. So, you know, before, before we wrap up, I just want to say, you know, this approach to content creation is unique to Getty Images. Our collaborations with contributors and our longstanding understanding, you know, our longstanding view of how we approach creating authentic visuals is really unique in the industry. And this expertise is the cornerstone of our creative approach. So I'm hoping this session has been enlightening. I'm hoping it's been inspiring. And most importantly, I'm hoping it's been a visual feast. Back to you, Jen. Thanks, Guy and Amy. Lots of great content there. And if you're looking for great custom content, we have something especially for you. Your brand is unique, so shouldn't your imagery be uniquely yours? With custom content, we bring your vision and brand story to life with on-brand stills and video made exclusively for you. It's simple. Just provide us with your creative brief and we take care of the rest. Whether it's product placement in Barcelona or new lifestyle images shot stateside, we harness the power of our over 300,000 Getty Images photographers worldwide to deliver assets that are on brand, on budget, and on time. Reach out to your Getty Images representative to learn more. We'll be back right after this. does the future of work look like? And importantly, what does the aspiration for work in the future look like? The theme we really wanted to focus on was exploring ideas of how to visualize modern business, modern office spaces, not just as places to work, but as places to connect. The future of work is, uh, <laughs> I believe, self-actualized. That we are able to be our full and whole selves through the work we do, and that is what needs to be represented in visuals. Who are the people that we're visualizing in this flexible working environment, and not to forget the older demographics? I would say we'll see a visual shift from burnout to balance. Now that we've seen why authenticity matters and how Getty Images captures it, let's show you how to find it. It's the fastest five minutes in search. Thanks, Jen. Hi, I'm Chris perez Iniguez, Senior Research Editor on Getty's Global Research Team. I'm here to share some tips and tricks on how to find imagery with that special spark of authenticity. We'll start on the Creative Insights page for looking deeper into our process and for discovering collections like the ones Amy and Guy just shared. Then we'll explore the ADP or the Asset Details page for finding clues that will help you manage your search. So let's begin. The Creative Insights page. As shared by Amy and Guy, what really sets Getty's work apart from others is our close collaborations with our contributors and the meticulous craft work we put into creating our imagery. On the upper left-hand corner of my screen underneath Browse, you'll find a link to what's called Creative Insights. Clicking there jumps into here. 
Now, this is a vital resource to discover our most current creative pursuits on topics such as realness, wellness, technology, and sustainability. For example, at the top, underneath trends, you'll find dozens of articles that give us access to the collections of imagery being discussed. Considered and concise, our team gets to the heart of the issues and share many opportunities for discovering new content and exploring even further. In lieu of starting a search from scratch, come here to find an image that you like, click into it to open up its ADP, and you have a perfect starting point for exploring specific photographers, collections, or other keywords. You'll find similar opportunities at the top of the Creative Insights page within Spotlight, which shines a light on specific contributing photographers and also within Collections, which explores our collaborative work born out of some very special partnerships with cultural and industry players. When it comes to starting a search from scratch, you'd do very well to begin with the obvious. Let's start with the keyword authenticity. I begin to our search bar, spelling it correctly. Enter. And as you can see up here on the left side, we've been returned about three and a half million images. And as we scroll, you'll see that the quality and range really speaks for itself. From big smiles to candid and contemplative moments, this keyword encompasses a spectrum of subjects, moments, moods, and aesthetics that each feel uniquely authentic in their own right. Let's focus our search um, a little bit more and um, type in the keyword travel using the Boolean term and. The Boolean term and narrows your results to images that contain both of the keywords and in this case will guarantee that every image returned will be travel themed. Pro tip, alternatively you can use the boolean term or between your keywords to widen your results to those that contain either of the keywords present and if you were to use the boolean term not before a keyword you would exclude any images containing that particular keyword. So experiment using these three terms alone or in combination to define your results in as short or long a search string as you like. Now let's go back to my Boolean term for and, enter. And as you can see, we have 590K images, which is significantly less than what we had earlier. Now scrolling down a bit, Find an image that you like. Click into it to open up its ADP. And here you'll find many clues for exploring further that will give you um, a better handle on your searches. For example, on the right side within the details panel, we have a link to the photographer's portfolio. Click into this link and it will land you directly onto the portfolio, which you can then uh, explore exclusively. As you can see here on the left side, Thomas Barwick, by chance, has been applied as a filter. And now we can search within this and maybe search for that Mexico shoot that Amy described earlier. Enter. And there we have it. Now, lastly, back on our ADP page, let's scroll to the very bottom where you'll find a cluster of keywords tagged to this particular image. Definitely take note of the synonyms and specific keywords here to define or broaden your search. For example, since we're searching for authentic travel imagery, I would pick out authenticity synonyms like real people or candid, uh, some travel synonyms like vacations, journey, or adventure, some contextual keywords like nature or outdoors, and a couple of um, keywords that describe an emotion like togetherness or enjoyment. Diversifying your keyword stash can help you expand your results 
or get very nuanced and hyper-specific about what you want. So whether you're arriving at specific images via the Creative Insights page, beginning a search broadly from scratch, defining a search with keywords found in the Asset Details page, or searching a photographer's portfolio, remember, there are always multiple pathways in to finding authentic imagery on Getty Images. That's the five minutes of search. Thank you very much. Back to you, Jen. Well, that's our show for today. Special thanks to our guests, Amy, Guy, and Chris. Don't forget to check out all of our past episodes over on the Getty Images events page and watch them anytime on demand. If you have any questions about premium access, visit gettyimages.com or contact your Getty Images representative. We'll be happy to connect with you. Thanks again for joining us. I've been your host, Jennifer Kelly, and we'll see you next time on The Download.